I woke up Saturday morning to a beautiful holiday uh, in Israel and say, starting to get the news of what's happening in the south. My instinct told me, drive south. People need help. We didn't have the, the, the whole picture. You will hear the picture soon. I drove south. No one told me to. Only armed with my pistol. Managed to go in right to Tzomet Saad. At that point, my life had changed. There is before and after. I had a minute right before Tzomet Saad to leave a short video in my iPhone to my kids. Aluma and Guni. I told them that I love them and I will miss them. And I will know that they will be beautiful children and they will do amazing things in the world. The reason I did this video, because I knew that probably I will die in a few minutes when I will enter what's happening over there. The moment I got to Tzomet Alumim, I see this beautiful kibbutzim that I know. I used to live in the Gaza envelope, burning. I hear the sounds of grenades, weapons firing all over, and so many dead civilians on the road itself right before the kibbutzim. Cars were blowing up. I took a weapon from a dead soldier and joined the fight. We fought for a few hours on kibbutz Alumim. We managed to, uh, to defend this kibbutz, kibbutz from around 30 terrorists. We found their maps and their objectives on, they had their objective written. What is their mission to do? Kill as many people as you can. I just want to tell you two insights and I will finish. One, we need to choose. There is a force, a power that aims for civilization, for life, for dignity, for love, for optimism, for caring. And there is a force who cherish death. I've seen it with my own eyes. We need to choose. It's only two sides. And if you, now it's in Israel, this evilness. Tomorrow it will be in another place. And the second thing I realized, and I will finish with that, for a moment, it was an island in time that the army couldn't get into those kibbutzim. And we felt what's happening to the Jewish people without having an army to protect ourselves. When I grew up, I saw the picture of the little boy raising his, his hand in the Holocaust and a German Nazi soldier holding his rifle in front of him. And I said, as long as it is up to me, something like that will never happen in the Jewish people, to the Jewish people because we have a country now. But at that terrible Saturday, for five hours, we all had witnessed what happening to the Jewish people without an army, without protection. I want to thank you, the people of Zaka, for what you are doing. All of Israel, Kol Medinat Israel is looking after you and admiring you. And I want to thank you, everyone that decided to come here and to, and to listen and to hear the truth, even if it's a very, very hard thing to do. Thank you. My name is Talia Dekel. I'm CEO of the Jerusalem Press Club. Um, never in my life have I imagined that, that we would be hosting such a conference. Uh, and for my team at JPC, this really is a privilege. Zaka's rescue unit's swift response to emergencies, to emergencies has saved l countless lives and assisted civilian populations. True virtue, or chesed shelemet, uh, is, is highly visible in emotionally distressing work for which Zaka is best known. This is a unique unit with a unique mission to honor the dead and ensure a full burial for those who meet a sudden death, sometimes by collecting spilled blood and body parts at the terror or accident site. Honoring the dead is considered true virtue, chesed shelemes, chesed shelemet. This is an ultimate act of loving kindness and altruism, performing a deed for which the recipient cannot express gratitude, and is the very hallmark and foundation of Zaka. Zaka teams have been working voluntarily for a week and a half around Israel's south uh, with tremendous dedication to identify and provide victims with a complete burial, making sure no one is left behind. Thank you, Zaka, for allowing us to bring your story to the world and for your service to Israelis of all kinds, uh, as well as Jewish people everywhere around the world. My name is Yossi Landau. I'm 55 years old. I live in Ashdod father of 10 children. We start to get some, some information that the missiles was basically a cover-up 
for an invasion, major invasion for settlements and for, for towns and for kibbutzim and for cities in Israel. No clue what I, I have, nobody's it's chaos. Nobody knows nothing, but I decided it's time for me to be not at home. We <laughs> arrived to the road. There was still gunshot, gunshots. Still, there was a war. It's a war zone. P, um, police, soldiers screaming at you, just go down because it's right in back of you. This terrorist, and you see people struggling to live. To live, they're wounded. The first thing, the first. You go to help them as a as an EMT volunteer. You just go to help them wherever you can save. And thank God we saved a couple of people with gunshot wounds. And then all of a sudden you see a gun in front of your face, a rifle. And you have no choice but to, but to take him down. And thank God, we took him down. Then we went further on the streets. We saw people in cars, people outside, just pedestrians, people in the houses, dead for no reason. The most, the most that we, we treated in, in, in Zaka was 45 bodies in one, in, one, in one incident. I saw the death in front of my face numerous times, but it won't stop me to go further what I'm doing. I can say 70% of those victims were shot in the back, not in the front. Mm -hmm. They were all shot in the back, not once, not twice, or from the side they came in. They even had time to pull them out of the car and search the pockets to find money, to see if they have money. It's a piece of road that should take normal, I would say between 15, 20 minutes, it took us for our volunteers. And while we were under fire and we have cover up, it took us 11 hours, 11 hours to clean up and not finally clean up, but whatever we could do. And that's not included, burnt cars, that we saw on the side that people were burned while they were alive. Then we came to a, a shelter where people went into that shelter, was mm -hmm. on, the, on the summit of Miflasim, I think it's the Miflasim, was a shelter. We just go into that shelter and we saw 20 people, 20 people, they were hugged. They were hugging themselves, trying to defend themselves. They were all burned to death. Just two, two grenades, hand grenades that did it, the job. And we have to separate them. I don't know if you know and you should never know what that means to separate the burned body. Those bodies told the stories. They were talking to us and telling us, this is what happened to us. Then we go further. We see a van, a Volkswagen, six bodies in that. They were not Jews. They were Palestinians. They were shot. It was a... I don't know, it was, it was Israeli plates. 
they were all shot and we put them into the bags, the same thing. Like we did to the civilians, to the Jews, because we respect, that's our mission, to respect every human being. They call us in in Kibbutz Be'eri. We were warned before, we were told before, listen, what, what you guys are gonna see now, just tell me if you're ready or not. If not, we can't take it. I took my team, 50 people in my team, 50 Zaka members that I know them by heart. I know them, the size of the shoe, I know. I know them. I took them for a talk and I, I, I explained them exactly what we're going into. And... I didn't ask them to get permission from the wife, from the kids, because I knew that if they're going to ask their family, they will not get any permission. But I asked their own permission, and I told them, before we go in, let's sing a song, because I know we'll need it. We got a song, a hope song. It's a future song. It's a song that we know that there's... There's going to be light in the end of the tunnel. I took them all together, hugging them. Let's go in. We went in. The first house we saw was a couple, father and mother, sitting they're on the knees, on the floor. They were on the knees. Now they were head down, hands tied to the back. On the other side of the dining room, it wasn't the living room, dining room, call it whatever, was seven-year-old boy and a girl, I would say about six years old, sitting just against the, the parents, hands tied to the back, same position. The bodies were tortured. While now, st start to use your imagination, who was tortured before? Who saw if this was, if, the, if this was on purpose? if this was the children looking at the parents being tortured, the parents seen, and when I say tortured, I will say missing body pieces. An eye, just taken out an eye, one eye, fingers being, fingers being And all, all this happened, and by the end, they all had a bullet hole in the back. And, still not finished, in the middle, there's a table. Those terrorists were sitting and eating their, their, their Saturday meal that was prepared for this family and, and was prepared... For this family, they just took it, they were hungry most probably, and they took it and they ate this meal while torturing these children and, and this parent. Three of my, I broke, I, I blanked out, and it took me a split second to blank out, and then I got to myself and I said, if this is gonna happen to me, then we're done with the job, my volunteers would never be able to do it. Now you can say again, Yossi's a crazy guy. I took them and we start dancing. We start, we didn't dance, we just sat down next to the bodies. In the blood, we had, we were sitting in the blood, singing. We had this white suits and I told them when we go out, we're going to take this white cover suits and we'll change it. 
But for now, we're sitting next to the bodies in the blood, and we're going to sing this, the, this song that they were supposed to sing for the holiday for Saturday. And we're going to sing, we're going to make like they sitting with us by the meal. It took us like three to five minutes. And then one of my volunteers said, Yossi, enough. We have to go further. We just got up. We took them. We handled them. We, we put them in the bags. And we said, now we're going further. I told him, let's go change because we're full of blood. My volunteer says, no. Yes, we're going to change, but I need a bag. I want to take this home. Then we see a woman, she was about, I would say, 30, age of 30. She was lying on the floor, a puddle of blood, big puddle of blood, face down. We have to turn her over in order to put it into the body bag. She was a pregnant woman. Her stomach was butchered open. The baby that was connected to the cord was stabbed. And she was shot in the back. Now we go into the same imagination. We're using, let's talk to the body. Let's talk. Let's see what happened. Did she see, see that? what was done to her baby or she didn't maybe she didn't have that suffer we don't know but we had a debate between us if to use two body bags for the baby and for the mother. That was our debate. While sitting with our children and having fun, we debating between us if to, if to use two body bags. We decided we're going to use only one body bag because we don't want to disconnect this baby from the mother. I ask you, I beg you, please, have a prayer. Pray for us that we should be able to raise our children with no damages, with no, we should be normal father, normal grandfather, that's all what we need. I want to give for my team my team that was with me for the last week, it was, we thought we were finished. It was only yesterday, and I can say it was only yesterday, it was 10 days after the attack, in Kfar Aza, we thought there's no more bodies, and we went in to take, unfortunately, it's very hard for us to do, but we do it because we're a human being to collect the terrorist. We collect them the same, with the same honor, with the same honor that we collect the civilians. And all of a sudden, we see a body. I would say he was maybe 14 or 15, a youngster. He was not in the house, but he was outside like... It looks like, as I said before, the 
the bodies were uh, telling the stories. He was running. He was on a run. And they most probably got mad on him. And they killed him and they chopped off his head. We found him with Aaron head. We put him in a bag. We don't know who this is. It's for sure not a terrorist because we know the clothing that he was wearing. But, and it, he was without a head. The evil, the horror is so, is crying, it's crying. And I don't know why this has to happen. I want to give, I want to give a message. It's a message to the world. And we should know that we have no enemies in the Arab world. We have in our organization, and not only in our organization, in every private life, I have a lot of friends, customers, and co-workers, Arabs, Palestinians, Christians, Everything, those people, I won't call them people because we can't call them people. We can't call them animals. We can't call them, there's, this is something that they don't belong to our world. It's, I would see, I never met the ISIS, but from the, videos that were that we saw from the ISIS and as we know that the Arab world condemned the ISIS this is the same thing has to happen over here they don't belong to the world they're not good for the world we want to live we can have a good a nice living without them whatever they did whatever they did they didn't do it only to my brothers and sisters. They did it for the world. Moi, je, je veux commencer comme ça. Je m'appelle Nachman Dickstein. J'habite moi, j'habite à, à Kiev. Et je suis venu pour les fêtes en Israël pour voir les enfants et mes petits enfants. Je pensais que j'ai tout vu là-bas, mais en fait, j'ai rien vu. J'étais partout en Ukraine, mais qu'est-ce que j'ai vu ici en une nuit Toute la route, elle était pleine de voitures brûlées, des gens jetés sur la rue, des gens qui se sont encourus. Des femmes, des enfants, des vieux, de tout. Et je me demandais, peut-être, ça serait comme quand j'étais en, en Ukraine et j'ai vu qu'il y a des morts, mais peut-être il y a des blessés que je peux aller aider. Alors je dis, j'avance, je continue, je laisse les morts. Et alors on a continué jusqu'à la fête, où il y avait la fête. Et je pensais que j'ai tout vu dans le chemin, mais en fait, non, pas du tout. Il y avait de les deux côtés, il y avait un côté où il y avait les corps qui étaient tués par balles. Et moi je suis arrivé, et on, on, on me dit, Zaka, viens, viens, viens nous aider. Et on, on a vu des corps brûlés, carrément brûlés. On les mettait dans un, un sac, et le sac il fondait. On mettait un deuxième sac, un troisième sac. Les mains se sont brûlées, les gants, ils ont brûlé. On, est, on a eu le, le, on peut même pas s'imaginer c'était et comme ça c'était je, je, je compte pas des corps on compte pas des corps mais il y en avait beaucoup et après ça on a continué de l'autre côté j'ai dit ok j'ai vu des c'était plus que 50 corps comme ça, j'ai vu, je vais de l'autre côté et c'était encore plus, encore plus affreux. 
Comme ça, on était jusqu'à 8 heures du matin. À 8 heures du matin, je, je, on ne tenait, tenait plus. Je suis rentré à la maison. On a dormi peut-être deux heures. Et on est reparti. Je dis, c'est sûr qu'on a déjà nettoyé tout. Peut-être que je ne dois même pas partir. Mais je dis, je vais partir, je vais aller voir. Et là, on voyait des... C'était pas du tout fini. Parce que plus qu'on avançait, il y avait encore des corps. Encore des gens qui sont essayés de s'enfuir. C'était encore 6, encore 10, encore 15, encore 20. Et... Eh, mi nombre es Avi Kowalski. Eh, yo vivo en eh, Kiryat Arba, 30 kilómetros sur de Jerusalén, eh, y soy eh, profesor de matemática. Eh, empecé voluntario en eh, Saka hace tres años. Y yo voy a contar qué, qué pasa y qué vi, solo que yo vi realmente. Eh, mira, eh, yo voy a leer porque mi español no es, es per, eh, per, eh, perfecto. Eh, enteremos que bajo mucha seguridad y, y en la primera casa que estuve, eh, estu, eh, estuvimos vi un eh, perro muerto y vi un mujer con eh, cerebro afuera es algo terrible mirar eso y en otra casa que, que estuve Mire una bebé que quemado sin, sin cabeza. Y mira, no, no, no vi mucha... Yo, es, es lo que vi, yo escuché más terribles cosas. Vos sabés que, que yo vi mis hijos en sábado y, y pensé sobre, sobre que, que el, el bebé que, que vi... Me tengo, vos sabés que tengo siete hijos y tengo un hijo cinco años de edad. Y yo, y yo hablé con él, oh, ¿cómo está? ¿Sí? Con, vos sabés que el chico, ¿sí? Y no puedo sin pensar que vi. Es bebé que, que vi. Es algo terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Y, y ahora también no, no, no puedo. ¿Qué, qué, 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 qué podemos eh, continuar? Es que puedo decir... Un abrazo a todos, muchas gracias. Para escuchar es un, muy importante.